Repetition and exposure to various modes of practice are instrumental in acquiring and developing skills to enhance the development of youth players. Coaching sessions of players 13 to 18 years should be based upon specific themes such as passing and dribbling and should include the following elements. A drill in which the skill to be practiced is allowed to be developed without pressure. A game-related practice, a situation such as 3v2 in which the skill to be developed is put into a realistic, game-like context. A conditioned game, a game such as 7v7 in which the continuing focus is on the skill being highlighted. This game should be as near to match play as possible. Throughout the coaching youth footballers programme, various examples of these three key elements are utilised to develop the following skills. Passing, controlling, dribbling, shooting and moving. In some sections, additional material can be found in the coaching youth footballers booklet which accompanies this programme. The following drills are designed to enhance the technique of passing. Here the player receiving the pass plays the ball to one of the outside groups, then runs to another. Now with two players operating in the centre. Two groups of three players operating simultaneously. The focus is on angled passing and player movement. In this example, a longer pass is used with a supporting run. And finally, a defender is introduced. After receiving a pass from one of the other players in the circle, the next pass must find the further away of the two centre players. Following a layoff pass, the ball is played wide and the sequence is repeated. This time with four players in the centre. This basic drill develops the first touch with the outside of the foot. An increase in distance and in the number of players helps differentiate the practice.
a simple drill for chip passing in which young players should be encouraged to use both feet. An extension of this practice in which the player in the first box acts as a defender and now as a supporting player. Here the four central players are paired off and take it in turn to be attackers and defenders. As defenders their objective is to intercept the lofted passes. Participation in game-related practices puts skills and techniques under greater pressure. In this example, a 5v2 develops until the team in possession can transfer the ball comfortably over the centre box to the other squad. Whenever one group dispossesses the other, they change places. This 4v4 game with a floating player who plays with the team in possession continues until a set number of passes have been made. Only then is the ball played forward to allow a 2v1 to develop towards goal. A condition of the game could be the inclusion of the floating player who has to make a certain number of passes. Again, the focus is the use of the outside of the foot. Following the initial pass, a 3v1 ensues.
Following the long pass, the player behind the goal has to play the ball back through the markers to score. Playing 8v4 using the corner players, the objective is to complete four consecutive passes before passing the ball to one of the corner boxers. From there, the ball must be transferred successfully to any other corner box to score a point. After the 2v1, the supporting players split to receive the layoff. The long diagonal pass precedes the cross. Conditioned games are the final stage of the session and should be as near to match play as possible. Here we have a 2v1 in the defending third, from which a long, chipped, accurate pass initiates attacks. Support comes from midfield. In this game, the objective is to keep possession. Failure to do so eliminates a team temporarily from the game. The team gaining possession should try to counter-attack as quickly as possible.
This game simply requires passes to be made with the outside of the foot. Several conditions could be applied to develop the pass, such as passes in the opponent half or every forward pass. Only goals scored in the large goal count. Goals scored in either of the two small goals earn the right to attack the large goal. Although the weight and angle of the pass here is important, the focus of these exercises is the timing and angle of the movement of the player receiving the pass. Too often young players run either directly towards or away from the ball. The awareness of a flat run across the face of defenders is an important part of a young player's development. The introduction of a defender and the game-related practice makes the run more realistic. attack, the centre player shoots then makes a run to the edge of the penalty box. The two wide players cross over, one providing a cross, the other a near post run. Defence, midfield and attack represented in this drill with a simple rotation among the three. Defenders move to midfield, then to striker, then repeat. Although sets of goals are used here, two markers with a receiving player in behind would suffice. A whole series of combinations could be used by the coach.
The attacking team play against the clock, trying to score as many goals as possible. Each phase of attack lasts 30 seconds, first of all with no defenders, then 30 seconds with one defender, then two, and so on up to five. Eventually working back down again to no defenders. The next attack cannot get underway until forwards from the previous attack have made their way back to the halfway line. Conditioned practice using the floating player who, depending on the coach's wishes, may be asked to supply the final pass or make two passes in the sequence or shoot. The defender in the wide area tries to prevent the cross while a 2v1 develops in the penalty box. The defender is changed with every attack. This shooting drill requires the players to shoot at goal as quickly as possible. This conditioned game is an extension of the previous game-related practice, in which the ball is played forward from a 4v2, followed by as quick a shot as possible. in groups of three is as follows.
To encourage shooting, teams can score in either of the side goals as well as their opponents. Six v three. The team of three has a goalkeeper. The team of six tries to score in the normal goal, while the team of three tries to score in one of the three small goals. Four v four plus goalkeepers. Each team has three defenders in their own half and one attacker in the opponent's half. Nobody is allowed to cross the halfway line. Shooting is encouraged as much as possible. Improving first touch control is the aim of this drill, as players attempt to direct the ball through the markers. The use of both the left and right foot is encouraged. The first touch is put under increasing pressure with the introduction of a defender. The coach stipulates the body part used to control the ball and the required number of touches. Here the first touch is given direction in an effort to get round a designated marker. Thank you. 
controlling and turning in this channel exercise. Then the introduction of a chipped pass and control. Then a controlled layoff. In this exercise, the ball cannot be passed through the gate from which it was received. The importance of one-touch control is emphasized in this practice. The two players in the defensive half cannot dribble the ball over the halfway line. It must be passed forward and laid off one touch by the attacker before the attack continues. Throughout the attack, the same forward is restricted to one touch. In this fun game, the end players, having received a chipped pass, must continue to keep the ball up for a specified number of touches to score a point. The striker's control is under pressure as the ball is played forward. He's encouraged to develop a 1v1 if possible. If not, he can use the supporting players. Two key players are identified in each team. They must be involved in an attack before the team can score. Inevitably, they're put under close scrutiny since the opposition know they have to get involved. This, of course, puts increased pressure on their control. In this case, the greens have two dark greys and the whites have two players in orange.
One of the most demanding of games is playing man for man defending. This also puts close control under pressure. Every outfield player except for two sweepers is matched with an opponent. The sweepers allow passes to be made to build moves. They should not cross the halfway line. Three groups of three with a floating player playing with the team in possession play in waves of attack. If the attacking team scores, they continue in possession and attack again into the other goal. If the defending team gains possession, they can attempt to play the ball into the middle third, an area in which they can compose themselves unopposed and prepare to mount another challenge on the goal. As the skill level increases, the team in possession can be asked to build from the back. Close control is an integral part of this style of play. Here we have a 5v5 game with goalkeepers, with a 1v1 in each of the attacking thirds. The attacking player in the 1v1 is restricted to one touch and only through involving him can the team in possession progress to score. The ball is dribbled and then crossed over the central player. After crossing, players move to the central area. This simple drill is designed to give young players confidence on the ball when dribbling. At a leisurely pace, they dribble around the area using both feet, changing pace and direction, stopping and starting. On the coach's command, they change with teammates. Every so often, the coach gives them the challenge of counting the number of gates they can go through in a set period of time. Each team has three goals in which to score. A point is scored every time the ball is dribbled over the goal line. Close control and dribbling technique are vital for success.
A very short but wide pitch with two scoring boxes for each team encourages good dribbling technique. The ball must be dribbled into the boxes to score. In this practice, two channels are marked out on the pitch. Once an attacker runs into a channel, he can only be challenged by one defender. If he beats him, he can continue to run in that channel unopposed, thereby encouraging a 1v1 in wide areas. Players are encouraged to drive at opponents in this exercise in which the method of scoring is simply to dribble the ball over the byline. <laughs> 